Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today we're changing a flare nut style fuel filter, commonly found on GM vehicles like this Chevy, but Toyota, Honda, and a few other companies use the same style filter, where you need to use a wrench to remove it. Just like most cars, the fuel filter is located under the car, and since the vet is so low, we're going to go put it on ramps. And then anytime the car goes up on a ramp, make sure you put a block on the rear tires so it doesn't slide backwards. Now we'll come to the passenger side where the fuse box is. On the back of the fuse box, it's very helpful. Fuel pump one, number 14. We'll pull that and you can hear the engine just stalled out. Perfect. All right, for the vet, the fuel filter is right under here on the passenger side. Get our drip pan ready. That is the passenger front tire right there, and if you look right behind the tire, the fuel filter is right up there. Now this fuel filter is clamped in and keep it that way. The first thing we'll do is remove the fuel line from the filter, and the clamp will help us hold the filter in place. Now you have two wrenches you're going to need. The larger wrench goes onto the fuel filter itself, while the other wrench, in this case I'm using a flare nut wrench, which if you have one, definitely use it, it'll prevent stripping, and that goes on the flare nut on the fuel line. Now that's not going to come off easy, so let me show you a trick. Slide the closed end of another wrench over the opened end of your flare nut wrench. The longer your wrench, the more torque you're going to have to remove a nut or bolt. Now we can hand loosen the nut. Remember to wear your goggles so gas doesn't get in your eyes and just let it leak out. And once it's finished leaking out, we're going to go remove the fuel filter bracket bolt. Now just slide the bracket out and remove it. Now we could separate the fuel line from the filter. Notice on the other end of the fuel line is an o-ring. If your o-ring is dry, cracked, rotted out, replace it so you don't get a fuel leak. I'm going to push this piece of paper towel in the filter to limit the amount of fuel it leaks. Now we can use the closed end of the wrench on this side and the box end on the other side. And break this filter free. Once you break it free, you can keep the wrench on the flare nut in the back as you turn the filter, since there's way more room to turn the filter than the wrench. And there we go. So that's our old filter and this is the new one. Always compare your parts and make sure they're the same. If you look at the threads on the old one, you can see after 30,000 miles, there's some corrosion, which made it hard to come off. So what we're gonna do is get some anti-seize on your finger and get some right in there and some on the other side and rub it into the threads. This will make it a lot easier to get off in the future. So when installing our new filter, pay attention to the flow arrow. We're gonna have to flip this around because the flow is going this way, through the filter, up to the engine. So our flow is now correct. Now get a wrench on the flare nut and tighten the filter down by hand. Good. Now get your wrench and snug it up. Good. Now get your fuel line and push it into the filter. And hand screw the flare nut into the filter. Get your one wrench on the filter nut and the other wrench on the flare nut. And snug it up. Just like that. Now that this side and that side are tightened down, we can get our filter clamp and snake it back over the filter. So when doing this, one trick that saves time is always put the screw in the bracket hole first. Then you could align the bracket, screw it together, and tighten it down. Good. Now remember to use a marker and write down the mileage so you have a record of when your filter was replaced. All right, once you finish putting that fuel filter in, don't forget to put the fuse back in. It just pushes back in. Close the cover up and let's test it out. Now don't immediately start the car. Turn it to the run position, wait two seconds, then shut it off. Repeat this twice so the fuel pump fills the filter and builds up pressure. Now you can start her up and we're gonna immediately check for leaks. She's leak free, so job well done. After watching this video, you'll be able to change your fuel filter and keep your vehicle in tip top shape. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Up on the screen are a couple of videos. To get to those videos, you can click on the screen or you can find the links in the description below, along with the links to all the products and tools I've used in this video.